Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodious. My name is Azalea and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another update to my Ritual Beast deck. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into this. Alright guys, so starting off, we are of course playing with our Ritual Beast Tamer. So we're playing three copies of Ritual Beast Tamer Elder. Elder is here at three because of the fact that you need to summon another Ritual Beast monster to your side of the field, namely a Spiritual Beast monster, in order to get your fusion plays going. So that's very important that you have uh, three copies of Elder, which is the enabler for all of these uh, combos. We're also playing one copy of Lara, one copy of Wen, and one copy of Zephram Pilica. Now, I, I play uh, one of each of these. They're mostly there for the names, but um, their effects do come in handy because of Ulti Kim and Falcos, grant you an additional normal summon. So, depending on the situation that you find yourself in, you're going to need either Lara or Zephram Pilica, or you're going to need a copy of Wen in order to bring back another Spiritual Beast monster and go for more, um, more combos. So they're only there for the names, you don't really need to play any more than one copy of each because of the fact that you never want to draw into them. In your, opening, in your opening hand, that is. Okay, so next off, we're playing three copies of a Spiritual Beast Tamer, Winda. Now, Winda is very important because uh, she actually counts as both a Ritual Beast Tamer and a Spiritual Beast monster. So I play three copies of her. She's a great transitional piece between the two, and she acts as another name for either of the two uh, types. Now, one important thing about Winda is that uh, you can actually summon two copies of her because one can be counted as a Ritual Beast Tamer and the other counts as a Spiritual Beast Monster. So when you tag out with your Ritual, or sorry, your Fusion, you can summon uh, both of these to your side of the field and it only counts as being Special Summoned one time. Keep in mind that all Ritual Beast Monsters can only be Special Summoned once per turn. So that's something very important and that's why having, um, you know, one of each type of name that's available to us uh, is very important in order to help you extend your combos. Alright, so that does it for all the Ritual Beast Tamers, and of course, Winda in there as well. Next off, we're going to go into the Spiritual Beast Monsters. So for the Spiritual Beast Monsters, we have three copies of Spiritual Beast Kanahawk. This is like the, uh, the most important card here uh, in terms of comboing off with Elder. Uh, it gets all your combos rolling, banishing stuff from your deck, and then allowing you to kind of loop with Ulti Kanahawk. Next, we're playing the second best card to open up with, which is uh, three copies of Spiritual Beast Repengu. Repengu is just a fantastic card as a substitute for a Kanahawk, so that's why we're playing two or three of both of these. Uh, both of these two cards. So that's why they're very important to have as three ofs. But then the other cards, we have one copy of Apelio and we have one copy of uh, Petalfin. Now both of these cards only run at one. You don't really need to see them in your opening hand. Um, Petalfin is here. The People like to cut this card. I don't understand why because Petalfin is really good spot removal and uh, Petalfin basically just can ensure you games or even help you Put, put yourself back in the game by uh, bouncing like floodgates and things like that your opponent has back to their hand. It's actually an insane card and I have no idea why people are cutting this uh, other than trying to boost their consistency, but Petalfin is just huge in this deck and it really comes in handy. Like maybe you, even if it's one in 10 games that this thing comes up, that's 10% of your games that you probably would have lost if you didn't have this card. So it's, uh, it's something worth considering. Um, again, you know, it's fine if you cut it, but I personally would not, especially because you know, we don't have that many Spiritual Beast um, names. Well, I, I guess if you count Wind in there, there's five names, which is okay, but um, do keep in mind that Petalfin has a really strong effect to, to act as spot removal against your opponent. Okay, so that's it for the Spiritual Beast Monsters. Next up, we're going to go into the Hand Traps. Now, for our Hand Traps, we only play one uh, type of Hand Trap, and that's just going to be Ash Blossom. We have three copies of uh, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. This is a catch-all um, Hand Trap. Now, of course, you can play stuff like Droll and things, but Droll isn't that great this format. Uh, Veiler is kind of weak compared to Ash Blossom because it doesn't hit as much. So this is a very generic um, Hand Trap to have, especially because we play a lot of back row to help control the field. You don't really need to worry too much about your opponent kind of going off because you can always nuke their bo board with uh, steeds and some of the other things I'll get into in just a bit. But yeah, three copies of Ash Blossom is pretty good. All right, guys, so that does it for the monster lineup. Next off, we're going to go into the spell cards. So for our spell cards, starting off, we're playing uh, three copies of Pot of Desires. I know, this is a very controversial card, especially in Ritual Beach. You're probably wondering, well, Zalia, you're playing so many one-ofs. Why are you playing Pot of Desires? Don't you risk banishing those? And the answer is yes, you do run the risk of that. You always do run the risk when you play Desires, but Desires really puts you there when you don't have any other options in your hand. If you opened up too many Tamers, no Spiritual Beasts. If you opened up too many Spiritual Beasts, no 
Tamers. You know, this deck is a very highly reliant on two card combos, and Pot of Desires gets you there, gets you those missing pieces when you're in a pinch. That And if you didn't have this card, you probably would have lost that duel anyway. So the risk is worth the reward of being able to continue playing. Now, even if you banish something like your Laras, your Zephyr and Pilikas, your Wens, it's fine, because you still have three copies of Elder, three copies of Winda, three copies of Kanahawk, and three copies of Rapengu, and it's very rare that you're going to banish all three copies of any one of those, along with all of your other one-ofs, right? There's a very incredibly low chance, and, you know, if that happens, well, that's, a, <laughs> that's just unfortunate, but you probably would have lost that game anyway if you were, you know, in desperate need of those cards. So Pod Desires really only has a, an upside for this deck. Um, obviously, if you opened up with your Elder and Kanahawks, you wouldn't play this right off the bat. You would wait until you've banished everything you needed to from your deck first, get everything into circulation, then play your Desires to try to draw into some extra back row, potentially your Ash Blossoms, or anything of that sort. So this card is either uh, an enabler for when you brick, or it's an extender for, you know, making your good hands even stronger, even better by giving you two extra cards. So I really like Pod Desires. I really highly rec recommend you try it out, even if you're kind of against it. Uh, please do, because Pod Desires really is good. All right. So anyway, that's enough about Desires. Next off, we're playing three copies of Call by the Grave. Um, this card coming back to three is fantastic for Ritual Beasts, especially because you know Ulti Kanahawk is still at one. Uh, Would have preferred that to go to three instead of you know Call by the Grave. But hey, we can utilize this against our opponent in case they have Ash Blossoms, anything of that sort, to try and help uh, stop our combos. We have that Call by the Grave to help us out there. Okay, the other three spells that I play are just one-ofs. We're playing one copy of Emergency Teleport, one copy of Ritual Beast Bond. Uh, you guys have been asking, like, hey, can you bring this back somehow? And yes, I can. Uh, so the trap lineup has been adjusted to, you know, uh, compensate for more spell cards in the main deck. Uh, so we're actually playing eight of them in total here, last one being Monster Reborn. Uh, Ritual Beast Bond is really good for helping you enable your OTKs and just getting those uh, that damage on board by going for the fusions and then, you know, smacking your opponent down. Monster Reborn is actually great here because if you open Rapengu and Monster Reborn, that's just a fusion right off the bat on your side of the field. And if you had another ta another uh, tamer like Lara or something in your hand, um, that enables uh, an Ulti Kim and Falcos play as well. Now, speaking of Ulti Kim and Falcos, Monster Reborn can actually bring back Ulti Kim and Falcos straight from your graveyard, unlike your other fusion monsters where you can't summon them that way. But you can reborn your Ulti Kim and Falcos and it can tag out into a tamer and a spiritual beast and just it's a one card get you back into the duel type of thing. So it's actually really good. Um, but yeah, that's nine spells in total. Next off, we're going to go into the trap cards. So for the trap cards, we are playing a few Ritual Beast ones, of course. We're playing three copies of Ritual Beast Steeds. You definitely need three copies of this because it is the card that helps you control the field. It helps you nuke everything on your opponent's side of the field and, you know, just lets you stay alive. Next off, uh, speaking of staying alive, we're playing two copies of Ritual Beast Ambush. I keep jumping between two and three, but in this build, I think two is enough. Um, just because of the fact that we have so many ways to swarm the field and you can only activate one ambush a turn anyway. Uh, this just helps you bring back a, uh, a Spiritual Beast monster and a Ritual Beast Tamer from either your Graveyard or your Banish Pile. So it's really good for if you have nothing banished and you really need stuff, you can bring it from your Graveyard out uh, on your opponent's end phase, and then on your turn you can just start popping off. So this is a great card to, again, just help put you back into the duel. It also combos really well with... Um, with uh, Steeds right here. So, you know, if you Steeds, Chainlink 1, and Ambush, Chainlink 2, you're bringing back two extra Ritual Beast monsters to nuke two additional monsters on your opponent's side of the field. So it's a really good two-card combination right there. All right, so next off, we're playing uh, we're playing a card. This card's going to get reprinted soon, so if you can't afford it now, I just hold off on it because Ritual Beast is the most competitive thing right now anyway, so there's no rush. Uh, three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Uh, now, this card, I've been testing it. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know how I feel about this card at first, but oh my god, it is so good because Ritual Beast struggles so much going second, and not only does Infinite Impermanence turn off a potential monster um, that your opponent has that's either Floodgate or has a built-in negation effect or something, it turns it off, and also also, you can shut down, you can lock down one of your opponent's back row that's like uh, right across in the same column from it. So it's, it's like a double whammy. You can get rid of a monster that can potentially negate your plays, and then you can also negate a back row that's also very important because Ritual Beasts hate back row, especially since we have only one copy of Ulti Kanhawk. If they had a strike or a warning or anything like that, you basically just lose. Um, there's no coming back from those types of uh, negations. 
So I really do like Infinite Permanence at three, but you know, if you have other cards you wanna play uh, in place of this, feel free to go ahead and do that. Uh, but next off, we're playing two copies of Torrential Tribute. This card has a great interaction with your Ritual Beast uh, fusions. So if your opponent, you know, summons something, you can chain link one your Ritual Beast fusion, chain link to your Torrential Tribute. Torrential Tribute resolves nuking the entire board, and because your fusion returned to the extra deck as a cost, it's safe. Now chain link one resolves, and you summon your Ritual Beast Tamer and your Spiritual Beast Monster back to your side of the field, and you just nuked your opponent's board for free while maintaining your monsters on board. So that is definitely a great interaction to know, and it is definitely uh, a very big blowout card. Um, this used to be big uh, earlier in the last format, but um, you know people started dropping this off for other things. This was played in like things like Altergeist, um, but then uh, you know it was a blowout card then. It's still a blowout card now because now people don't expect it as much. Now the last card that I play in this deck is one copy of Macrocosmos. Was testing this earlier today, and uh, man, I, I cut it originally and I put it back in, and this thing steals so many games because some decks just auto lose to this thing, having to uh, having to banish everything, spells, traps, monsters. Um, it prevents certain effects from going off, shuts down some certain hand traps. This thing is just so so good. Um, and as you notice, I cut out Imperial Order and Anti Spell Fragrance. You can always side those cards, but I don't think. Uh, Sky Strikers are like that big that you have to, uh, you know, commit uh, a bunch of main deck space to it. But yeah, uh, Macrocosmos is also really good against that deck anyway. So this is a pretty, you know, pretty strong in terms of back row. Now, obviously, consistency is always an issue because, you know, you can't search in these trap cards here. But hey, if you manage to draw into them with desires and stuff, really puts you into the duel. Um, but yeah, Macrocosmos, last minute throw in, but I really do like it. Anyway, that does it for the main deck. Next off, we're going to go into the extra deck. All right, guys, so for the extra deck, starting off, we're, of course, we have to do this. We're playing three copies of Ritual Beast, Ulti, Kim, and Falcos. Now, Ulti, Kim, and Falcos is a card that's so, so powerful in this deck. You only really need two during your games. The third rarely ever comes up, if ever. Um, but the thing is, uh, you can always banish a copy of this with Rapengu in order to send a tamer from your deck to the graveyard because it's a psychic-type monster. So that's something to keep in mind. It's actually really powerful. Again, Again, you only need two copies of this, but I like to send the third copy, which is why I'm playing three right here. Okay, so next off we have some of more like generic Link monsters. Uh, so of course we have our Nightmare Package, one copy of Cerberus, one copy of Phoenix, one copy of Unicorn. This is just too good to pass up, especially because Ritual Beasts actually have a lot of swarming capabilities, and we're not limited to like, you can only special summon Ritual Beast monsters this turn, um, unless of course you activate Ambush, but you should be doing that on your opponent's turn anyway. Um, so you get a bunch of monsters during your opponent's end phase, and then on your turn, you can always Cerberus, Phoenix, Unicorn, Spot Removal, especially Especially Phoenix and Unicorn, these two cards are fantastic for getting rid of your opponent's back row before you go into your ulti Kanahawk again, just so it doesn't get, you know, destroyed and then you lose the duel because you lost your, your uh, one and only card that really keeps you in, in terms of sustainability. All right, and then next we're playing two uh, Link 4 monsters, so we're playing one copy of Boralode, one copy of Boral Sword, right? Just the generic Boral Sword kills people, and then uh, Boralode just goes ahead and steals stuff. So these two cards, pretty good. Next off, we're playing one copy of uh, Lightning Chidori. This is our only XYZ in the deck. Now, Lightning Chidori is here instead of something like Tornado Dragon, instead of something uh, like Castell, who plays Castell anymore. Um, but Chidori is here because it kind of acts like both. You can return a set card your opponent controls back to the bottom of their deck, and then you detach material, target something they have face up, and puts it at the top of their deck. So. In certain situations, if your opponent has like a really dead card on their side of the field, like a field spell or something, you can always return to the top of their deck and you set them back a whole entire turn. So they get a dead draw, and if they're already behind on resources, you've essentially just ensured victory on your next turn. So I really like Lightning Chidori in that aspect, but you can always replace this with any other XYZ that you prefer, Baguska, Abyss Dweller, what have you. All right, so um, next off, we're going to go into our fusions. Now, this is, the, this is the fun part, right, as always. So we're playing one copy of Ritual Beast Ulti Kanahawk because you can only play one copy, which really sucks. But we're also playing two copies of Ritual Beast Ulti Apelio, two copies of Ritual Beast Ulti Petalfin, and one copy of Ritual Beast Ulti Guy Pelio. Um, I like the 1-2-2-1 two, two, one, uh, ratio. Some people don't play Ulti Guy Pelio, but I find that uh, in certain situations, and this is a reason I also bumped uh, Ulti Kim and Falco's up to three 
uh, is because of the fact that um, you want to keep your ulti guy Pelio just in case you need, you know, when to crash, you can summon this out. 3200 attack is pretty good, but also keep in mind that with a Pelio, with ulti Kim and Falcos and their effects, you can actually boost this up to like uh, an extremely absurd amount of attack points. So this is definitely something to keep in your extra deck to out specific cards. Um, I had certain times where my opponent summons like um, Ultimate Falcon against me and just run it over with this thing. It's uh, fairly simple. There are other times where you actually legitimately summon this because it's not that hard now with Ulti Kim and Falcos. And uh, before you do this, of course, you use Ulti Con Hawk to go for a bunch of searches. So you end your turn with like Ulti Guy Pelio and like three negations in hand with like a Steez and Ambush set. And it's just incredibly hard for your opponent to, to get over that. Um, Ulti Pelio is fine at two. Petalfin is fine at two. You send one copy of each. Um, banish it, I mean, with Rapengu. So you're only left with one copy to play with, but it's fine because Petalfin is very defensive and honestly, it shouldn't be dying to anything unless it's a strike. And Ulti Pelio doesn't die to anything during the battle phase anyway when it attacks because it's unaffected. So uh, these cards have really good um, sustainability and they're not really going to die to anything. So that's why I feel like having two of each is completely fine, especially because you can rely on your uh, link monsters to kind of clear your uh, opponent's board before you go into these anyway. So yeah, anyway, that does it for the extra deck and that does it for the deck profile. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.